Now, if you are trying to enter the small car market in India, you have to make sure you are offering a good number of features. You have to make sure you are following all the safety and emission norms laid down by the government. And you have to make sure that your car comes in at a budget because this segment is very price conscious. Now, one such car maker that's trying to crack this formula is Citroën with the C3. We've already driven the C3 earlier, but what we have with us today is the C3 but with a turbo petrol engine underneath the bonnet. So what's that like to drive? That's exactly what we're going to find out today. Hi, my name is Dhruv Paliwal, you're watching AutoVax and today we're driving the C3 with a turbo petrol engine. Okay, before we get started, just a quick request, please subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so that you can see all the videos on our page and obviously you can stay notified as and when we put out the video. And if you like this video, share it with your friends, share it with your family. And with that, let's get started. Now obviously it's a Citroën so the design of the car has to be fantastic and I think that's the case with the C3. Starting with the front end over here you obviously have this double Chevron logo. It's nicely been done up in this chrome. It looks quite upmarket for the segment it is in. Then you also have these LED DRLs over here which kind of give this a nice chunky look. The car's front end a nice wide look and the headlamps have been placed a little lower. It's a simple halogen unit with a reflector setup. Uh, I think it works really well uh, even if it's a simple setup. Then you have the fog lamps underneath over here and again that's again a reflector setup. You have no projectors here. Then your front end, the lower air damp is tucked in here and here. You also have these nice big slots for air to pass through, keep everything cool. Now as you move towards the side, uh, one thing we might have missed about the bonnet is, you'll see that the bonnet also has a lot of cooped out surfaces over here, a lot of textured surfaces. The front end of the Citroen C3, that added bit of zing, that is I think is missing in the segment. On the side, you do not get alloy wheels. You have these styled wheel covers with the Chevron logo on them. So yeah, that does look nice, but obviously steel wheels, they do take away a little bit from the look of the Citroen C3. Now, obviously, this is the turbo petrol version, but you do not see that orange that Citroen seems to have thrown into the C3 because this is a different color scheme. And I think I like this one a lot more than the orange. The orange is very loud, even though it does have a bit of flair about itself, which I do like. But overall, uh, as an aesthetic thing, I don't think, uh, I think this color looks better than the one that's with the orange. And you'll also notice this nice little texture design this bit of applique over here now on uh, the regular car and even on turbo petrol versions there is it's orange in some cases uh, but because this car has no orange on it so that's why uh, that has been given a miss i think it looks really good let's come towards the back of the car the best part over here i think has to be the citron logo the double chevron logo sitting in the middle of the car with the tail lamps on the side. Now, obviously, all of this is regular halogen unit over here. When you light all of this up, you'll see that it's a halogen unit. But the idea here is, I think even looking still, sitting still, the Citroen C3, it looks special. It looks different from everything else that is there in the segment. And I think that's the real reason why you should be considering the C3 if you're a big fan of design. All right, time to step inside the cabin of the Citroen C3. And first things first, I think for a car in this segment, in this side, it's quite spacious. I mean, there's a lot of space around me. That's a big, big plus. Now, starting uh, with everything in here, I think, first of all, everything has been designed with a lot of attention to detail. All the surfaces, they have a nice texture to them. Obviously, uh, this is a small segment car. so. Everywhere there are hard plastics, but that's acceptable because the design that Citroen have incorporated. I mean, look at this dashboard over here. It's multi-layered. Uh, you've got so many different design elements. The AC vents, I mean, wow. They don't, they not only do they feel uh, really nice to look at, but they also feel very toughly built. I mean, these air vents, AC vents, they feel like they've been nicely built and are going to last a long, long time. That's a really, really big plus. Now, with that done, let's just get started on the regular stuff first of all the seats over here i think uh, they have this fabric texture over them even the test car is right now gotten dirty it's going to be a little difficult cleaning them up if they start to get dirty but because the upholstery is black so you 
will have a little bit of leeway over here and there. Uh, as far as the steering wheel is concerned, it's a nice chunky unit with a Citroen double chevron lower sitting right in front of me. Uh, you have uh, buttons over here on the right side of the steering wheel to control the infotainment system, the instrument cluster. Now that's a small unit, it's a small negatively lit uh, MID. It has your basic information, so that's your speed, that's your fuel gauge, that's your temperature gauge, your average fuel efficiency, uh, your trip meter, that's pretty much it. That's the stuff you, you get on it. Now, honestly, uh, for today's day and age, the instrument cluster looks a little dated, but I like how Citroen has laid out the information because it's very easy to use, it's very easy to read when you're driving the car. So at least the functionality of it, that's really, really good. Uh, apart from that, you have this nicely horizontally laid out touchscreen. Now let me just switch this on. I think this is one of the best touchscreens that I have used in a small car. First of all, because it's horizontally laid out, I think it's, it's easier to read and you've got a lot of options over here. You've got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, and it's wireless. I haven't even plugged in the wire, and my Apple CarPlay, it's connected to the system. So that's a really nice one. The air conditioning, uh, that's manual. It's not an automatic unit, so some people could be bummed by that. And there is only one USB charging slot here. It's a Type A unit, so those of you who've been carrying around Type C cables will have to think about that. 12 volt socket here to charge all your accessories, uh, to plug in your accessories and charge your phones and stuff like that. Also, Citroen is offering a lot of storage spaces. You have this one shelf over here, this one space down here, these two cup holders here, then there's some space in the center console, and then obviously there's space over here at the back, which we'll show you when we get to the back. Apart from that, uh, I think the one nice thing is there is power window for all four doors, uh, but the front ones, you've got two buttons here, you've got one button there to control the front power windows, and you've got two buttons in the center console here, but you don't have any on the door band. I'll show you when I get back. So basically, they, these act as the driver's control, and people from the back also can use them if they want to. Again, the gear lever I would like to give a special. First, when I started using this oddly shaped gear lever, uh, it was a bit something to get used to. But now I think once I figured out the way I want to use this, uh, it's not that big a problem. I think it's very easy to get to grips with this gear lever. And that's pretty much about it. One thing, yes, there is no day-night IRVM and I think that's an unforgivable miss. I would not want to drive a car which does not have a day-night. I'm not asking for an auto unit here, but at least something, even a manual switch that allows me to flick over to the other side to cut out the glare. So yes, apart from that, uh, the Citroen C3's C3 cabin seems to be a pleasant place to be in. Now let's head to the back and see what the situation is like over there. Now we talked about roominess when we were in the first half of the cabin and I think that continues to be the theme when you step into the second row of the Citroen C3. You've got an ample amount of space, the front row, the front seat, this seat is set to my driving position and I have acres of knee room. I have enough space to tuck my legs underneath the seat in the front and uh, the only thing that's probably a little lacking is small amounts of under thigh support but even for me that's fine anything who anyone who's taller than me might probably not feel that way uh, apart from that i think the same hard plastic story continues here uh, the roof liner is being done up in beige so that does set, add a sense of airiness to the cabin you have no armrest here but the backrest it's well it's nicely supportive it's nicely made so i think it's going to be a comfortable space to say uh, even the bench, it's pretty flat, so uh, regularly sized three people can be adjusted here for shorter journeys. Obviously, when it comes to storage, you only have this one bottle holder that I showed you from the front. And you've got two bottle holders in the doors as well. Apart from that, you've got these two USB-A charging sockets here. So two people can charge their phones in the back half of the Citroen C3's cabin at the same time. And power windows need to be operated from here, not from here. That's pretty much about it. And with that done, let's go start driving the Citroen C3 Turbo Petrol. Yeah. Now underneath that bonnet is a 1.2 litre 3 cylinder turbo petrol engine. It makes about 108 brake horsepower and 119 newton meters of torque. That's a decent amount and you have a six speed manual transmission. There is no option of an automatic. So let's start it, get rolling and see what it is like to drive. 
Okay, initial impressions, uh, the turbo petrol motor here, it's quite punchy at it at lower revs. It allows you to pull forward quite nicely and without giving in a lot of throttle input. So driving it in bumper to bumper traffic, city traffic, that should prove to be ideal. Even when you start hurrying the car, uh, I think uh, it picks up really nicely. The mid-range is packing a lot. And even when it's nearing its red line, the car continues to pull, the engine continues to deliver you decent amount of torque. So at no point do you feel that it's running out of breath or it's running out of steam. That's a really good thing and it's a very reassuring feeling in a small car. Now apart from that, the transmission here, uh, the clutch, it's light to use. I think it's on the lighter side, it's not the lightest clutch to use in this segment, but it is relatively easy and you're not going to have a hard time even if you are stuck in traffic. Now one thing here, when you're reversing the car, you have such a nice display in front of you, but the C3 does not get any reversing camera and that's something that you'd really miss a lot. Second of all, another small quirk, these ORVMs, this is the top spec model of the Citroen C3 and you still do not get electronically adjustable ORVMs over here. That's a miss, but with that, let's just get back to the driving experience of the car. Uh, now, we've told you about the engine. The engine, it's a pretty good unit uh, as far as its refinement goes. Not very well refined. There are small monobikes, this being a three-cylinder. It feels okay. It doesn't feel outrightly thrashy or thrummy. That is what you expect from three-cylinders generally, but that's not the case here. I think uh, the gearbox is... It's short throws, uh, it's not the smoothest experience, but it's 80% there. Uh, so you're not really going to be having trouble uh, shifting gears here or anything, but also obviously it's not the smoothest experience. It lies somewhere in the middle and that is enough for what the C3 is trying to be. And that is an entry level car for Citroen. The right quality. Now that's where the C3 really earns its praise. Uh, it's got a really nicely lush setup you do not have a lot of sound from the suspension coming inside into the cabin so that that really is one thing that's really really nice and even the insulation uh, of road noise tire noise seems to be have been done decently well apart from that now obviously as i've told you that the c3 has a plushly set of suspension so that's not going to do its handling any favors uh, so yes obviously you can expect it to pitch and roll a little bit when you get hard on the throttle hard on the brakes or you're cornering it and it's obviously not a corner cover this is a daily city car and for that it's going to be really really well broken roads not so broken roads all of that uh, the citra c3 will take on easily but yes if you do try and hurry it around a corner you will not end up enjoying that experience but that doesn't mean that the citra c3 is a real slouch it can hold its own but yes Yes, it's just not meant to do that and you'd uh, better be enjoying its nice supple ride quality than pushing it through the corners. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about fuel efficiency here. Uh, since I was saying, according to Air AI, this engine can deliver up to 19.4 kilometers per liter, which is quite an impressive number. Now, we've been driving it since morning and the average fuel efficiency that we've been getting on the instrument cluster in front of us has been anywhere between 12 and 15. But do remember this, we've been shooting the entire day. We've been driving this car in a not so civilized manner. We've been accelerating hard, braking hard. So obviously all those things take away from your fuel efficiency. But if you do drive this with a light foot, uh, you should be able to get close to that number, especially seeing the fact that this car has a six speed manual transmission which will do it a really uh, like a big favor on the highways. And that's all we want to talk about the Citroen C3 drive experience. Now it's time to sum up this video. And frankly, the Citroen C3, it's trying to be the trendsetter in the segment. It's trying to stand apart by the help of its design with the help of its engine that offers a lot of performance. But the only thing that here is the downside for the Citroen C3 is the fact that it's missing out on some key crucial features. Now we talked about the uh, manual ORVMs, we talked about the day night mirror inside the cabin. Also the wiper and the defogger, they're not simply here in this price bracket. And at 8.15 lakh rupees, that's the price of this, that's the egg showroom price of this variant standing right next to me. That's a bit of a miss. Now, Citroen needs to improve on things like this if it wants to become a people favorite. But as far as the first move goes, the Citroen C3 Turbo Petrol is a nice one. Thank you so much for watching this video. And until the next one, goodbye.